teaching the wrong lesson, a Burbank middle school teacher turns herself into authorities for having sex with one of her students. It happens far too often. So what punishment fits the crime? Oh, it's breaking news. The runaway Prius has brought Toyota's troubles back into the spotlight. What can this car company possibly do to salvage its image? Give me that dress. A brawl breaks out in a bridal store. Now, let me ask you this. Shouldn't the bridesmaids be in there helping out? All the stories people are talking about and everything you need to know right now on The Filter. Hello again on The Filter Forefront. Our top four of the day, including Jesus is back and he's gay. But we'll start with this. Be honest. If you were buying a new car, would you buy a Toyota right now? Every day it is something else. And of course, this happened on Monday. What kind of Toyota? A Prius? Yeah. One of your accelerator stuff? Yeah, yeah. I've tried to pull it back. Pull back. Okay, how fast are you going? 80 something. You're going 80 miles an hour? 81 now. 81? Yeah. And it's still stuck? Yes. The 911 call from James Sykes, who was flying down the freeway in his Prius with a gas pedal stuck. Sykes claims he called a Toyota dealership in El Cajon, told him he was having problems. They told him his car wasn't on the recall list. Our contributors tonight, Megan Barth from RedCounty.com and Emmy Award winning journalist David Reese. David, I'm going to start with you. In my mind, Toyota's got a whole lot of trouble going on. What can that company do to regain anybody's confidence? Well, they got to come clean about what the problem is here. I mean, you talk to any automotive expert, and they will tell you that this whole business about the little gas pedal problem, that little metal piece that's supposed to solve this problem, this may not be a mechanical problem. It may well be a software problem. And Toyota doesn't want to admit that because, A, it's expensive and difficult to fix, and, B, it will shake everyone's confidence in the car even more. People like to think, oh, there's a fix for this, therefore it'll be okay. Let me, let I me think jump Toyota in, David, has, David. Let me just jump in and say, shake everybody's confidence a little more. I think everybody's confidence well, is shot. Well, it's true, but part of the problem is they are not coming clean about this, and they've been very slow to react. I think that they have a tremendous PR nightmare on their hands, and the only way to face a PR nightmare like this and to head it off of the pass is to get in front of it and to be forthright. I don't think Toyota has done that. I think there might be some cultural things at work here, but, you know, until they come clean about what the problem is, and this yesterday incident in San Diego could not have come at a worse time for yeah. them. Yesterday was the day they held their big PR thing where they came out and refuted all of the evidence that said this might be a software problem or an electronics problem. And then look, this is what happens. And this from a car that supposedly may not have been part of that original recall. This is clearly a problem that's growing and they're not in front of it yet. And until they do, this is going to keep happening. They got a big mess. I feel sorry for the dealers in Southern California that make a living selling these cars. Megan, I have to wonder, why would anybody buy a Toyota right now? Yeah, I got to say the same thing. I mean, if I see a Toyota behind me on the freeway, I'm going to get out of the way for sure. But, you know, I, I think the Toyota spokesman that came out yesterday and said the dealers were fixing the recall vehicles on a rollout basis and they hadn't gotten to Prius models yet. I mean, that's not really, you know, taking your arms and, you know, grabbing a hold of this problem. I mean, you have to do as a manufacturer, I have, I have some background in this, you have to do kind of a root cause analysis, you know, of your whole entire system, your quality system, which includes suppliers of parts, labor, manufacturing, plant locations. And instead of taking a reactionary position, you know, Toyota needs to step up the plate and take a proactive position by addressing the problem, finding the cause, rectifying the problem with a single or multi approach solution. That's what they have to do right now. They have to stop playing um, in a reactionary role. I think, I think you're right about that. And, of course, their slogan for years was moving forward. The problem is those cars are moving right. forward with no way to stop. All right, you got it, on. Toyota. Okay. Yeah. If you're in desperate need of medical attention, I mean seconds count, you need an ambulance. What happens if there isn't an ambulance? In another attempt to save money, the city council considering shutting down 10 rescue ambulances at night. Could save as much as $23 million next year. Officials say fire trucks will still have life-saving equipment, so the fire department will be there. They just may not have an ambulance at night. Now let me add, city officials say the ambulance is slated for closure, handle an average of three to five calls a day. Possibly save lives. Definitely save money. Megan, what do you think of this? 
Okay, three to five calls a day. How, how many is that per year? I mean, do the math. That's 1,500 emergency calls that they're going to deny patients treatment, all because it's the same old song and dance from the unions that uh, that actually use fear to instill this. I mean, you can't, you can't tell me that you can't find waste in the city council outside of cutting ambulance, fire, police, teachers. Look, this is the same old story, a different year. I mean, does the L.A. City Council really expect the taxpayers of L.A. County to take them seriously when they again go after the same problems year after year and not address the true cause of the budget crisis, and that is waste and spending? And until they really look at where they else can or where else they can identify some waste and spending, then I'm sorry, the taxpayers are going to have to step back and really take a hard look at who is running the show. I, I just took a little bit of a look, and I noticed that one of the city council members is now going to be head of the legislative um, budget analysis, who's also a fire chief. And he is not putting forth any other solutions except for, uh, you know, making the, the fearful cuts in ambulance services. And if that doesn't work, then he's going to look at increasing taxes again on all of the taxpayers in L.A. City Council, either through increasing fees, imposing fees, parcel taxes. Come on, the, the gig's up. You got it. L.A. City Council, really, you got to look at your own backyard and start making some spending cuts. All right, David, we're, uh, we're short on time in this one. Go ahead. Take the last 30 seconds. Well, you know, three to five calls a day. Um, I agree. Are you going to tell the families of those three to five people that, well, you know what, just wasn't enough to work, you know, wasn't enough calls to really justify an ambulance. I mean, come on, city council needs to get their head out of their own rear. You know, this is, don't cut public safety. Those are the one of the very few things that we really do depend on our local governments for. They need to find other ways to trim this money and not affect public safety or health. Interesting you say that, because if you have your head in your rear, it is awfully difficult to see, David. I think that's a valid point. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>